guys and welcome back to another tutorials for M Crater. So today we're not going to be doing um, MBT variables. Sadly, I was running into some issues with them and I'm not sure if it's a bug or not. I opened a bug re report so we'll be seeing if the, we can get that fixed probably in the next update. But uh, other than that, uh, what we're going to be doing is something a little bit different. Um, been getting a lot of pet requests and stuff like that, so I tried recreating uh, something as close to a wolf as I could. Um, it's a little bit different, but um, uh, with the limitations of M Crater, uh, I was able to come up with something that's uh, pretty cool, something that you can still use as uh, a pet type thing and it just had a little bit different mechanics. So we have three different types of entities. There is the wild rhinoceros, <laughs> and uh, this one just basically is wild. It doesn't attack anything or anything like that. Mm. And if you, you can configure it how you want, of course, but uh, if you punch it, if I can actually find the hitbox, there we go. Now it's following mm. me. It's technically, um, attacking but it doesn't do any damage so uh, we can walk around have it follow us uh, we can go into a bunch of areas that are high um, very dangerous and stuff like that and uh, if we need it then uh, I have it programmed right now to attack sheep so if we just put it into attack mode it will start to destroy the sheep and uh, this will last for 30 seconds uh, before it will um, basically reset and it will always attack those targets so 30 seconds is up and now it's back to the follow mode so uh, yeah and if you're wondering how the um, the name tag above there is all works I actually figured out something really cool that I'll be showing a little bit later so into uh, M crater and I'll uh, show you how all this is set up and works so for your resources, what you're going to need is three textures, depending on what stage of your, or basically your entity state that you're going to be having. Uh, I have a regular rhinoceros, which is the one that's in follow mode. I have one that is a rhinoceros attack, which is the attack mode, and then wild rhinoceros, which is also the, um, the wild version, which you would be able to find somewhere in the actual overworld or whatever world that you want it to be in. And uh, same goes for the Java models. It's the exact same thing. It's just been renamed, set up with the properties and stuff like that. If we go into the actual settings for one of these for Blockbench um, and go to Project, uh, these names all match the texture just so it all works properly. And I've basically just copied all this, the settings after I've completed it, brought it into... Um, or exported it and then changed all these properties again. So change this to wild, uh, wild, and then wild for the texture as well. Saved it again and then did it for just the regular one as well. So once you have all that, uh, you should have uh, your your saves for Blockbench, your actual model files, and your texture files all available. Import them into M Creator, and then we can actually look at the code. All right, so the code for the rhinoceros is pretty straightforward. We're just gonna look at the one that follows first. So the actual entity label, if you want to use color codes, you can actually use the uh, symbol that is found for the color codes on the formatting codes on the website. You can use this symbol right here. I'm not sure what the um, actual name of that symbol is, but it's what Minecraft uses to set the color codes. These are all the different color codes that you can use for the labels. And uh, I basically just set it so it's the color code and then what I wanted to basically say. So this would be the follow. So not at, well, not exactly at nine, but the symbol nine is for blue, light blue, I believe. And then I just set up the sounds. Um, I have no um, creative inventory for the egg for this and the model and rhinoceros uh, actual texture so, and model, so up there. And then what I have is set it to mob, um, unidentified for the creature type. I've set the entity health to 10 and then 5 for the experience and movement speed is 3, pretty much all the same settings. 
Uh, the attack strength for the, the follow one is set to zero. This basically allows it to still follow the player, but not uh, inflict damage onto it. So um, it's basically constantly targeting the entity as a hostile. However, because it's not dealing any damage, it's always following them. So it doesn't actually do damage, it just follows. So that's kind of how that part works. And then the armor uh, protection base I have just set to one, so it's a little bit resistant. And uh, no writable controls or any anything other than that. You can set the um, anti-immunity to whatever you want, but uh, I haven't set that up. Uh, per, per particles, you can set that up if you want. And then for this, I have when entity dies, oops, and I have it set up. So I've created a local variable because we only need this to run once. And that's for, uh, pardon me, two local variables, one for random drop and then one for random roll. And then I've basically set the variable to a random number and then I've tested for a random drop if it's greater than uh, 0.66 which is a 33 percent chance of dropping both of these items and if not then what if it's the other uh, 66 percent then it's going to uh, test if it's greater than or equal to uh, 0.33 which is a 66 or another 33 percent between uh, this percent and that percent and if it's still not then it's just going to spawn error so it has a chance of spawning error if not and then the roll is just determining what item uh, to basically drop it could be either or at that point because it's 50 uh, 50 percent chance so that's basically how the drop works and all the entities have that same procedure so the other one is when the entity is hurt, what we're doing is spawning the entity at the coordinates and then um, basically the attack mode for this one. And then we're despawning the current entity that we basically just spawned it from. So um, this would be the wild one that we're de or not the wild, the, uh, the following one that we just despawned and then it's spawning the attack mode. So basically just like that. And um, that's basically the same mechanics across the board. Uh, for the for the actual attacking, um, what I have set up is attack targets, uh, make aggressive, call for help. So uh, I have that checked. And then uh, do melee uh, contact, attacked with speed factor 1.2, chance of uh, uh, chase after lost of sight, and then I have that checked attack only in sight and then I have both of these checked and for both ent uh, entities player and player MP for multiplayer and then uh, wander around this usually doesn't get used but it's if it's out of uh, kind of distance of seeing the player then it will wander around if uh, it also has a chance of just looking around at that point too and then it also swims in water so that's basically the AI tasks you want to make sure AI is enabled and you don't need anything else for this to work. Uh, spawning properties I have disabled for this particular one and uh, it's not too much different for the attacked one. Uh, this one is in light red uh, color code and it just says attacked above the name and then it has a little bit of different sounds. And then I have the uh, texture and model uh, for the attacked and I've also named it uh, rhinoceros attacked or attack. Uh, again, mob because we need it to attack things and then the experience or entity health is set to 20. It's a little bit stronger. Uh, five, basically some settings. I have this a little bit higher. It's set up to double the amount of distance. So it's, uh, I believe, four chunks that it will detect if there's an entity nearby. So being a sheep. And then... Um, Attack strength I've set to six, and then this is set to one for armor, and then the rest is the same as the other entity. Uh, again, the same procedure system as for the drops and stuff. And for the entity um, actual procedure for the update tick, what we're doing here is we're um, basically running the um, a local variable, no, pardon me, global variable. And what we're doing here is we're basically setting a timer to go and uh, count up to uh, 30 seconds. So this is the 
global timer that we're setting for the particular rhinoceros attack. So this is across all rhinoceroses, so always constantly go up. And if it reaches 30, then what it's going to do is, that's again 30 seconds, This, if you divide, um, I think it's 1 by, or 20 by um, 60, I think it comes out with this number, which is 60 seconds for 20 ticks or something like that but that's the number that you need to kind of basically get to seconds. So if it's 30 seconds, then it's going to despawn the entity, uh, set the attack timer to zero, and then it's going to spawn the rhinoceros. This could be a little bit up there as well. So like that. And that's all that is, it's doing. It's basically setting it back into the follow mode, and then it's despawning the attack entity. So that's basically how that's set up. And for AI, um, I have it just to be aggressive, chase after being lost, and then I have it nearby only and attack in sight. And then we just select our entities. If you want more entities, you just add this to the list. You search for your entity. So say we want, uh, say, a husk, then we would put a husk down there and then it would add it to the list of things that it can, t can attack. And again, if it has nothing to do if it can't find any target then it's just going to wander around look around and then swim in water basically the same thing as the other one so that's basically that uh, again we don't want it to generate in the world because this is like a tamed property kind of thing so we have disabled the spawning properties and the last one is just basically a cloned one from the regular rhinoceros i have it for the wild version um, I've set up a spawn egg for this particular one just so it's a little bit easier for testing and stuff. It's under miscellaneous. Uh, it doesn't have an entity label and uh, the textures and model are set up. And it, this one's just a creature. It's undefined. It has entity health of 10, 5 for experience, um, movement speed, and tracking range is basically the default. Uh, um, Arm, attack strength and armor protection zero and one and the rest is the exact same no particles and I have it to have the same procedure to drop items and then what we have is when entity hurt uh, it's supposed to spawn some particles around uh, that wasn't working great so I don't know exactly if that was doing it I wasn't paying attention so I'll, I might just remove that, but basically the most important ones are just this procedure here and that procedure there. So we're despawning the entity and we're spawning the follow entity. So it's basically the taming mechanics uh, for the actual thing. So these two right here at the top are the most important. And then you can put whatever you want below it. And then... For spawning properties, uh, or AI, pardon me, I have it to follow when a player is holding grass, uh, tall, tall grass, uh, in the hand with speed 1. Watch closely uh, player and player MP, wander around, look around, and swim in water. And then uh, I have it also so it's breedable, and it's breedable block it, or item is uh, grass. So that should be the tall grass, I believe. Uh, yeah, so it's a tall grass that it's breedable with and then you can basically create more of these and then for spawning properties I have it so it enables spawning and then you can basically um, find it in the wild. You can set the biome if you want to down here. Um, for rhinoceros it would probably be, make more sense for savanna but I left that just blank so it's everything, every biome you can find it. Um, it's a creature, so it will always spawn on the grass and like above caves and stuff and Spawn weight is 20. I'm not sure how high that is, but that's basically everything there is to basically making it work if you have windows and you um, Want to get to that character really easily you can open up the character map uh, you can do a quick search and type char and then character map will come up and then from there, it's right on the bottom page right here. So you can see the symbol, you can select it, copy it, and then you can paste it into your entity label um, right here. So you can paste, 
basically paste that in. But other than that, uh, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.